Welcome to Slow American English, the podcast for learners of American English. I'm your host, Karen Tolliver. This is episode number 1609, United States Regions. The United States is a huge country. It spans an entire continent from the Atlantic Ocean in the east to the Pacific Ocean in the west. Its geographic area occupies 3.794 million square miles. That's a lot. It is not surprising that the country is often divided into regions when we talk about economics, weather, language mannerisms, and so on. The U.S. Census Bureau, which is responsible for counting population and tracking demographics, officially divides the nation into four major regions. The region names are easy to remember because they use map directions, Northeast, Midwest, South, and West. Furthermore, each region contains divisions or groups of states. For example, The Northeast region contains the New England and Mid-Atlantic divisions. The New England division consists of Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Visit the podcast blog site at www.slowamericanenglish.net to see a color map of the Census Bureau regions and a list of the divisions within each region. People who live in the different regions can be described by adding ER to a region name. So people are called Westerners, Easterners, Northerners, Midwesterners, or Southerners. Although they are good general guides, The Census Bureau designations are not the only ways Americans refer to geographic areas of the country. Region names and meanings vary by location and have evolved because of cultural differences and geographic features, not governmental units. Therefore, each group might have a different name for each other's region due to different dialects and attitudes. Here are some examples. The Mid-South states are farther north than the Deep South states. Southerners say that people up north in the Northeast and Midwest are Yankees. Easterners may travel out west or to the Pacific Northwest, Oregon and Washington. The East Coast is often referred to as the Eastern Seaboard. A slang phrase for the West Coast is the Left Coast. Arizona, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, and Utah are considered the Southwest. States in the lower right section on a map of the U.S. are thought of as the Southeast. Geographic features also are used for region names. Appalachia covers roughly the region of the Appalachian Mountains, stretching from the southern part of New York State to parts of the Deep South. Upper Plains states are located in the northern part of the Midwest because of the flat land there. The Great Lakes region consists of the states near the Great Lakes on the northern border of the U.S. Sometimes the term belt is used to refer to a continuous geographic area with a common characteristic. For example, the Corn Belt is the region of the Midwest where corn is the primary crop. The Bible Belt refers to southern states where fundamental religion is prevalent. The Sun Belt is the southern hot weather portion of the country from coast to coast. Conversely, the Frost Belt is the northern area prone to very cold weather. The Rust Belt is the northern area where industrial factories were common but are now unused and decaying.
Another way to refer to America's regions is by time zone. Listen to episode 1508 of this podcast for details about that topic. There are many, many more ways Americans refer to the regions of their country. The ones presented here are just a few of them, but they are common and may help you understand regional phrases in American English better. That's the podcast for this time. Slow American English is written and produced by Karen Tolliver. Copyright 2015. The music for this podcast is written and performed by S.W. Campbell and used by permission. The opening theme song is Junie Says. The ending music is Beans and Dirty Rice. Find these songs and more music by this artist at www.soundclick.com slash S-W-C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L Please visit www.slowamericanenglish.net for a free transcript of this podcast. There you can also download additional materials for a small fee. Such materials include regular speed recordings, vocabulary exercises, comprehension quizzes, and discussion topics. You can subscribe to Slow American English for free via iTunes. This has been Slow American English. I'm Karen Tolliver. Thank you for listening. Chicken of the sea.